Hey, this is uh, Royce. Just showing you how I made rails and styles for a cabinet setup. Uh, it was a pretty quick project, and this is old film, so uh, sorry for some of the badness. So I just did this in Fusion 360. Uh, it's the way that I found to be really accurate. It's a it's an accurate program compared to some of the other ones that I use. Uh, I built a parameter because I knew that all my rails and styles were going to be roughly the same dimensions. So I just made one big piece. We'll call it the blank. And then I'll show you what I did from there. And if you're wondering what is the benefit of doing rails and styles uh, on a CNC machine, it's the miter. Now you can do miters on a table saw you can you know spend hundreds of dollars for that um woodpeckers miter or whatever uh and you'll get pretty accurate well very accurate uh miters but it's not every single cut whereas the cnc is perfect every single time and i had the cnc so i was like let's just do it this way so I have my basic dimensions uh, measured out and I'll make all the other cuts from here. So I moved over to manufacturer real quick to do my setup. Uh, I'm making it the same size as my blank. The idea behind this was, is we're gonna have all the rails and styles cut dimensionally, um, you know, to the exact size that we want them. Doing that traditionally is just way faster uh, than CNC cuts. So put in the dimensions, uh, moved my origin over, and we're back to design. So here I'm just changing the materials physical component uh, and obviously I'm using wood, but I like the glass component because uh, it allows you to kind of see what you're doing a little better. Obviously not something that you need to do. And I roll into the sketch and here's where I'm going to start showing you. Uh, I made one big parameter and now I'm going to start making the smaller stuff so that I have the exact size for the rails and styles. So I just moved over a little bit and picked a spot. And I know that my uh, angle of the miter is going to be 45 degrees, of course. So push that over and then let it snap. So now I have my first miter angle. And then I'll run my exact distance all the way to the other side. And I'll do the reverse 45. Uh, going back the other direction. Which of course, it's not a reverse 45, it's 135. And let it snap. Snap there. And then I'll run that line back. And there we go. From here, we can extrude to the exact height of what we're going to do. And that's your basic part. So one of the things I'd like to point out about doing this is if you do it this way, you also leave room for snipe if you're using conventional tools. Uh, that snipe will be, be cut off in the extra material. 
So we're back in manufacture. We're going to do a contour. It's real simple. Select our tool. Four six two zero two K. That's an Amana bit. If you know me, you know it's Amana. And I think unlike anything other that I do, I only need to cut these two sides, the miters, because everything else is already cut. You know, I have a, a jig that this is sitting in, so you only have to make two cuts, which also made it much faster. Now, am I saying that this is the right way to, to do miters and everything? No, I'm not, you know, doing something like mosaic is going to do some, this so much faster. But if you are beginning in CNC and you want to do mitered edges, look into this. It's a good way to do it. So again, most of my videos, I go into a lot of detail. And of course, you can see what I'm doing, but I'm not really going to talk you through it this time. Uh, again, this is kind of because it's old film and you can see what I'm doing, uh, but I can't say that it's exactly how I would do it now. I've I've gotten better. Um, this way did work. Lead in ramps, smoothing. Uh, those are all things that uh, I do think were really positive for this project. Um, a final last pass on the inside is great that way you have just the smoothest miter it's perfect and what you're seeing is just the simulation and it's simple i have a little bit of video coming up here soon where you're going to see it um, it's just two real simple cuts and it comes out with a perfect miter so if you're willing to spend the extra time programming, uh, then this is a good way to do it. It was a little painful for a full kitchen, which this was. But if you're doing a cabinet or two, it's a great way. So I'm just setting the file. I'll be saving. Hey, I know this is not the most exciting video in the world, uh, but you know, if you get a chance, please like and subscribe. Uh, a lot of the tutorials that I do are much more in depth, much more engaging. I ask you to go look at those. Um, this was just one that was sitting on my computer, and I said to myself, "Hey, I just..." need to get it out because uh, there's someone, and this is inevitably what happens on YouTube that I've noticed, there's someone asking the question, how can I use Fusion 360 to do this or to do that? Well, here's how to do rails and styles. So not the most interesting thing I've ever created. And I hope you appreciate and like it by liking and subscribing. So here we are. Um, this is like the only video that I took of me doing all this work. Um, and unfortunately, it is time-lapsed or the opposite. It's slowed down super slow. Um, so I sped it back up like 500%, but it's still slow. But as you can see, that's the uh, Amana tools. 46202K down cut. I use the down cut because down cuts push everything down, gives you a nice clean top. There's my jig. And there's all the stuff that I cut. That's uh, glue up with a uh, little putty. Painting. I didn't approve of the color. Turned out really nice. They looked really great. Uh, I just uh, uh, didn't like the color.
And that's it. Uh, hope it was helpful. And uh, check out one of my other videos. Promise it'll be better. <laughs>